let's take a look at some of the similarities and differences between the basics of the sweep feature in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. Here I am starting out in SOLIDWORKS. Before I do anything, I'm going to create some geometry in my model. I'm going to use the extruded boss base command. Just grab one of the sketches that already exists in the model. Let's flip the direction. And then from the right mouse button, I will click the OK button in order to complete the feature. The only reason I created some geometry to begin with is to show you that there are three separate commands in SOLIDWORKS for the sweep feature. If I want to add material to my model, I will use the swept boss base feature from the features tab. If I want to remove material, I will use the swept cut command. And if we want to create this as a non-solid feature, you can go to the surfaces tab. And here we have the swept surface command. So that's one difference to be aware of from the beginning. Again, I only created that feature just so that the swept cut command would be available. Let's select the feature that I created and I will delete it. Let's click the yes button. And so here I am in my part and I've got two different sketches in here. In SOLIDWORKS, you are going to create both your trajectory and your section as separate sketch features before you start the sweep. And that's another difference between SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. And so here I have a sketch that I'm going to use as my trajectory. And then I have a sketch that I'm going to use for my profile or my section. Let's start off by creating our swept boss base. And here you can see our property manager for the feature. Up at the top, we have our profile and path. And so the first choice that we have is whether we're going to use a sketch profile for our section or if we're going to use a circular profile. And if I choose circular profile, one of the collectors goes away. Here we have a field where we can specify the diameter of the circular profile. Let me select my feature that I want to use for my sweep. And there you can see a preview of what we're going to get. You have the up and down keys. Let me try to type in a smaller value. There we go. You can choose what you want for the diameter. There you can see what you get if you use the circular profile. But I don't want to use a circular profile. Let's go back to the sketch profile option. And then here we have the collector that we can use to select our sketch that we're going to use for the shape. And so, again, if you're going to create the sweep in SOLIDWORKS, you create both the trajectory and the section beforehand. Let's go to some of the other different options. If I expand guide curves, here we have a collector where you can select additional curves to control the shape of the sweep. And this is similar to using multiple trajectories in Creo Parametric for what used to be called a variable section sweep. Now it's all within the same sweep command. We have the options available here. And so instead of following the path, you can keep a normal constant. In this particular situation, since our path changes directions, it would end up causing the feature to fail to be generated. Let's change back from keep normal constant to follow path. And when we go over to Creo Parametric, we'll see that there are quite a few additional options for controlling the orientation. Here we have the profile twist. Right now it is set to none. You can change from none to specifying a twist value, specifying a direction vector, or tangent to adjacent faces. And specifying the twist that's going to happen in the feature, this is something that actually is not available on the Creo Parametric side. And then we have an option here to merge tangent faces. Then we have our show preview. If I expand start and end tangency, well, here's you can, where you can specify if you're going to have tangency at the start and or the end. I'm going to choose none because I have nothing to be tangent to. And then here's where you can generate this as a thin walled feature. And again, be careful doing this in SOLIDWORKS as I showed in some other different videos. Once you make a feature thin in SOLIDWORKS, 
it's kind of a, a one-way path. You know, so it's always going to be thin when you do that. And the last option that we have here for the curvature display, you could show a mesh preview. Don't exactly know what I am getting in that particular situation. There's a zebra stripes option. Okay, you know, maybe that's going to be useful to you. And you can show the curvature combs. Again, I'm not exactly sure what we are getting in this particular situation, but let's turn off some of those different options. And so those are some of the different controls when you're creating a sweep feature. Similarly, if you hold down the right mouse button, some of those different options are going to be available from the pop-up menu. But that's good, let's hit the check mark, and there we have our sweep feature created. If I expand the little arrow next to sweep one, there you can see the sketches inside of the feature. By the way, sketch three over here has a little minus sign in parentheses indicating that it is under constraint. Let's go back to this one and then edit the sketch. And this one is a weird situation. I get this sometimes when I am working in SolidWorks where I have a sketch that for some reason is showing up as under constraint. You can see that we have a bunch of different constraints in here. I think I've got all the necessary dimensions. If I try to add some additional dimensions, I'll get an error that I'm over constrained. So if there's anyone who's aware why this particular sketch is under constrained, please let me know because I cannot figure it out. So anyhow, let's hit the check mark to get out of the sketch. And here we have, oops, I use way too many CAD programs. Keep on getting mixed up in terms of how to manipulate models on the screen. And so we have our sweep feature. Now let's jump over to Creo Parametric to see the similarities and differences. All right, here I am in Creo Parametric. You can see the sketch for the trajectory. It has the same dimensions as the sketch that I was using in SOLIDWORKS. I'm gonna select a, another sketch here in the model and extrude it and flip the direction and just hit the middle mouse button in order to create some geometry in here. And the only reason I'm doing that is to show you that when I go to the sweep command from this single command, we can generate this as a solid feature or a non-solid feature, and we have a button to toggle whether this is going to add material or remove material from the model. Similarly, if I use my right mouse button, that will bring open up a mini toolbar, and here's where it's generating this as a solid. Here it's generating it as a surface. I can use this button to make it remove material from the model so that it is a cut. So again, in SOLIDWORKS where we had three separate commands for the sweep, in Creo Parametric, it is just a single command. But let's cancel out of here for a moment and I'm going to take this extrude and delete it because I don't need it. I only create it so I can show you that if you have solid material in your model, hey, then you'll have the ability to create your features as a cut, as something that'll remove material. So let's start off our sweep once more. And in Creo 8, it automatically opens up your most likely to be used tab. In this case, it is the references tab. Let me select my sketch that I have in the model. Here we have an arrow. We wanna change which side is going to be the start or not. And we also have some drag handles and some dimensions if we don't want to use the entire length of the trajectory. And you can have multiple trajectories. So we had that in SOLIDWORKS. You can do the same thing by adding additional trajectories in here, but there are also a couple other additional kinds of trajectories that you can use in Creo Parametric. You can use something called tangent trajectories. That's indicated by these boxes with the T's. If you grab another trajectory, you can define something as the X trajectory or the horizontal orientation vector. It's a little bit in the weeds. I have a whole bunch of other videos on sweeps in Creo Parametric. I don't want to go into X vectors and tangent trajectories in this, this video. I just want to mention that those different things are available to you. But anyhow, we have our trajectory here. 
In Creo Parametric, you create the section for your feature inside of the suite feature. You do not create the section in advance like you do in SOLIDWORKS. And that's because you have all these other additional options. So for example, doing normal to the projection, uh, you have that constant normal direction. You have horizontal vertical control. You have the X direction reference at the start. And because of these other additional options, it's going to change the orientation of your section inside of the feature. So that's why in Creo Parametric, you create the sketch inside of the sweep feature. I know that's a big differentiator. I know that people who come over from SOLIDWORKS really like having the sketch existing in advance, but again, because of the additional options and complexity that you have in Creo Parametric, you create the sketch inside of the feature. And when I hit the sketch button, well, it takes me into sketch mode and you can see some crosshairs located at the origin of our trajectory. Hey, let me go to the palette and I'm just going to grab a similar shape to what we were using before. Let me change this dimension and then just drop this in right here. Let's hit the check mark to finish importing the section. I'm going to change some of these different dimensions so it'll end up having the same values as the section that I was using in SOLIDWORKS. There, that's good. Let me use the right mouse button to get to the check mark to complete the sketch. And there you see a preview of the feature. Let's take a look at a few of the other different options that you have in here. So here is the thicken sketch button. So you can thicken the sketch. Unlike SOLIDWORKS, this is a two way door. You can change this from being a thickened sketch or not if you want to. So for example, if I choose to thicken the sketch and right now we're using a very big thickness, let me try a smaller value and you can flip the direction that it's going to be thickened or you can say, Hey, I do not want this to be thickened at all. Let's turn that off entirely. Also, from the right mouse button menu, you're able to get to the Thicken Sketch command. All right, let's go to Options over here. We have Capped Ends. This is grayed out because we're not generating this as a surface feature. If I was generating this as a surface, you would have the option to cap the ends. If you have geometry already in your model, you can choose to merge the ends. Another option that you have in Creo, since you are creating the sketch inside of the sweep feature, instead of using one of the two ends of your trajectory as the location of the sketch, you could use a point on your trajectory to define the location of the sketch. And here we have tangency. You can specify whether you're going to have tangency at the start and the end, just like you have in SOLIDWORKS. And here's the option that we have for generating this as a different body than the default body or the current active body. So there is a quick overview of the basics of the sweep feature. And again, to recap, two of the big differences that we talked about in this video. In SOLIDWORKS, you have three separate commands. In Creo Parametric, it is a single command to create the sweep. And in SOLIDWORKS, you typically create your section before you create the sweep feature and you also have that option for a circular profile in Creo Parametric because of a number of these other different options and controls that you have for more functionality for creating a sweep feature well you create the sketch inside of the sweep feature i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.